I've said it before, and I'll say it again, but me and horror are a weird couple. There's a lot of horror movies that I love, and a lot that I don't. X used to be one that I really didn't like, but now I do. I'm sorry, what? Since the prequel to X, Pearl, came out, I decided that it'd be a good idea to take a look back at X before I saw Pearl. Not just to remind myself of what happened, but to also see if my opinion had changed. Rather than do two separate videos, I thought I'd do one talk about both films and see what makes them work and why I think this is a really interesting horror world that Ty West is creating. So yes, I didn't like X when it first came out. Honestly, I don't know really why I had such negative opinions on it. The only things I heard about it before going into it was that it was very good and that it was a loving homage to slashers of the 70s. When I got out of the film, I was surprised at how bored I was and thought the film wasn't that great. Maybe it was because people kept saying it was one of the greatest horror films they'd ever seen and it got my expectations too high, but I left thoroughly disappointed. Now, having not seen it since it came out and going into it with a more open mind, I actually had a really fun time with X. While I don't think it's that scary, I don't think that was the ultimate goal of the film. Slasher films of the 70s didn't have the tropes that became standard in the 80s thanks to films like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. It was still a relatively new type of horror film and there was a lot of variety to how it was done. This wasn't the era of big over the top kills, it was mostly just creepy atmospheres and people getting stabbed. Rather than focus on making the audience feel scared, most of the film is dedicated to getting to know these characters and actually becoming invested in the story. For those that don't know, X follows a group of young people as they set out to make a porno on a farm, but unbeknownst to them the owners are a bit weird to say the least and aren't very happy they're staying there. With this kind of premise, one would assume that there wouldn't be much time wasted and it would get right to the scares. But the scares really don't happen until the final act. While there's the occasional jump scare here and there, the murders and creepiness doesn't happen until about like the last 30 to 45 minutes. That's honestly pretty rare for horror films these days as most throw in scares just about every chance they get. There's nothing wrong with that, but I find it more engaging when we get to know more about these characters and build a connection with them so when they start dying we actually feel something for them. I think what can be one of the biggest draws for some people is the visual style of this film. Ty West and his team perfectly recreated the look and feel of 70s slasher movies with this. Everything from the lighting, the cinematography, to the dirty and dingy feeling that makes the film feel cheap really helps to sell this film. If you're a big fan of slashers from this era and love the way they look and feel, then you're definitely going to love this. I think there's any complaint that's still a holdover from the first time I saw this was some of the themes and ideas the film introduces. Multiple times we see news broadcasts of a preacher talking about the sins of sex and stuff of that nature, and it makes it seem like it's going to play a bigger part in the narrative, but it really doesn't by the end. You think that would be why the owners of the house start killing them, but it really isn't because of that. To me, if they went more with this idea, I think the film could have had a really interesting angle to go with, but it doesn't feel like an idea that was fleshed out enough. Another complaint is while we spend a lot of time with our characters and get to know them well, at the end something is revealed about Mia Goth's character and I don't know why it was included. The film doesn't make any mention of her past nor does it make any kind of indication, so the reveal at the end feels like it was tacked on and doesn't change anything. Had this idea been more present and explored more, then there'd be something. But as it stands, it just feels like it was added as a last minute reveal and nothing more. But, like I've said before, I think this is a really fun film. While the scares are relegated to the end of the film, I'd still say that X is well worth your time. The cast is fantastic and a lot of fun to watch, the story's entertaining, and it's a visual marvel, especially if you love 70s slashers. It truly was a great time. If you haven't seen it yet, please do yourself a favor and check it out. I'm going to give X an 8 out of 10. Now, it's time to talk about the surprise prequel, Pearl. Made right after they finished filming X, Pearl was once again directed by Ty West and he co-wrote the film with lead actress Mia Goth. And this film tells the story of Pearl, the villain from X, as it explores her life in the late 1910s as she struggles with caring for her father, keeping her relationship with her mother intact, fighting off sexual urges for men that aren't her husband, and making sure her murderous tendencies don't come out. Now, I think it's important to note that until the last 20 or so minutes, this is pretty much a drama for most of the movie. Ty West was very clearly inspired by films from the golden age of Hollywood, and you could tell that through every frame of the film. From the way he frames and lights his shots to the beautiful yet haunting score, everything about this film screams golden age Hollywood. This was probably my favorite aspect of the film. What makes his choice work so well is that slashers really didn't exist back in this time. Because of the way the film rating system was back then, horror movies were heavily censored with most just being monster movies that could barely show anything. So, to see a slasher film set in what is supposed to be this perfectly pleasant and beautiful time period is honestly a bit unsettling. But, it's not just its cinematography and score that sell this film, it's Mia Goth's incredible performance. While she was great in X, it wasn't necessarily a role that made her stand out from the rest of the cast. But here, she truly gets to show what she's capable of. Not only does she sell this 30s to 40s type of performance well, but when her character starts to lose it, she goes to some truly incredible and disturbing places. There's a monologue that she has near the end of the film that can honestly be considered as the climax, and it's all done in one take and it's truly incredible to witness. 
If there's any reason to go and see this, it's because of her performance. While a lot of people go to see horror movies for the scares, I go for the opposite reason. Sure, I want to see if this film can't scare me like everyone else, but I'm more interested if the story and characters are capable of standing out from the rest. I think that's why I gravitate more to films like Doctor Sleep and Us. While those films have some great scares, it's the story and how it explores these characters that make me want to go back and see it again. That's the same with Pearl. The way this film explores Pearl's character and gets her to a point similar to how we know her in X was incredibly interesting and one of the best aspects of the film. While it's sometimes better to have a slasher killer just kill for no reason, I do like it when films like this actually explore what made this person the way we see them later on. And I gotta say, that ending is one of the most disturbing endings I've seen in a horror movie in quite some time, and that's all I'll say about that. But I do have to say, if you're expecting jump scares or creepy atmospheres, then you're going to be disappointed. The scares don't come from loud noises or from creepy looking places. They come from seeing a woman slowly lose her mind and make horrific choices in a perfectly pristine and beautiful world. That's the genius of this movie. It doesn't attempt to scare you traditionally. It truly wants to get under your skin and make you question why are you seeing something terrible in a setting you never see something like that in. While they're two completely different films, I think Pearl is my favorite in this series so far. B. Goth's performance is incredible, the cinematography is stunning, the writing and direction are some of the best I've seen lately in horror. It's truly one of a kind and you should see it as soon as you can. I'm going to give Pearl an 8 out of 10. So why are these films so popular? What is it about them that audiences are becoming so attracted to? Because if you look at them as regular horror films, they kind of fail at that. A lot of horror movies have scares as often as they can, and these films are seemingly against that. And yet, rather than people revolt against them, they love them. Why? I think it has to do not with the scares, but with how the films feel. The feel of a film can be attributed to a lot of factors, but the biggest factor I think is through how a film looks visually. Film is a visual medium, and how it looks is some of the best way to separate from the others. If you look at comedies from people like Adam Sandler, visually, they're very boring. There's nothing interesting about how the shots are framed, they're lit so everything is perfectly seen, everything is in focus, it's very boring to look at. But, the reason a lot of comedies do that is to put the focus on the jokes and what the characters are doing and saying. When you look at horror films, the visuals are everything. From the way shots are framed to how much is left in the dark versus the light, it's all done to deliver the most effective scares possible. With X and Pearl, Ty West used his visuals to deliver scares in a very different way. As I mentioned when I talked about Pearl, these films are emulating certain eras of films, X being 70s slashers and Pearl being Golden Age Hollywood. These were very deliberative choices that West made. It could have been very easy to just say both of these films were set in these eras but film them like any other horror film, but he went the extra mile and did everything he could to make them feel like they were from these eras. But why? Neither of them have anything particularly scary in them, so why put in all that extra effort? Well, it's because of how these films feel is what leaves such an impact with the audience. With X, audience members that either grew up with this era of films or just fans of them are seeing something that so perfectly emulates them that their brains are remembering all the fun they had when they first watched films like Halloween or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's not about being scared, it's about having fun, and I think if X was filmed like most horror films today, people would say it was boring and uninteresting to watch. With Pearl, like I mentioned earlier, what makes it so effective is seeing horrific things happen in this perfectly pristine era of film when you never saw stuff like that happen. The disturbing moments last with you more because you never saw things like this in The Wizard of Oz or It's a Wonderful Life. An era of film that mostly stayed away from the horrors of the world is having the horrors be brutally forced into it. Like with X, had this not been filmed like a golden age film, it wouldn't be nearly as effective. Now, with Maxine, the newest film in this series that was just announced, we learned that it's going to be set in the 80s, the decade that solidified slasher films. So, Ty West has an interesting challenge ahead of him. How does he make a film in this series that's still interested in exploring its characters and story while visually delivering a film that perfectly emulates slashers of this era? Well, we'll have to wait and see. If he keeps the same ideas he did with these films, I think we'll be in store for another slasher that's not just a love lair, but something more than we expect.